Hey guys, uh, I'm Marissa, Sabbatical Beauty Ambassador, and tonight for She's a Sabbatical Beauty, I'm interviewing Hain. Hi, Hain. Tell us about yourself. Hi. So I'm Hain. I currently work in the auto industry, but I've worn a lot of hats in my previous lives and career. So pretty much jack of all trades, master of pretty much none. <laughs> I know a lot of different things about random industries, so... That's me. Um, and I've been using Sabbatical Beauty for about almost a year now. I think I'm at like eight or nine months, so. Your skin looks amazing, yeah. by the way. If you look closely, I have some trouble spots on my forehead, but I'm working through those with all my Sabbatical Beauty things, so it's okay. <laughs> um, so tell me your life before SB and how you felt about your skin and the products you were using. So I have extensive K-beauty love before sabbatical beauty. Um, I lived in Korea for four years, so I got heavily into VVIP status, like Tony Moly, things like that. I didn't know there was VVIP status until I bought so many things. They're like, oh, you get a discount today. I'm like, oh, that's fabulous. Is it my birthday? They're like, no, it's because you bought a lot of our stuff. So <laughs> here's your discount. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Um, my favorites were like the sheet masks and all that other stuff. But the thing was, I felt like my skin was so sensitive and so like out there because I get an oily T-zone, but then I get like dry patches and it's very sensitive to things. So I thought there was no one product or brand for my skin. So I was a little unhappy. And I think the biggest splurge was, you know, that Estee Lauder little brown bottle that seemed to work really mm -hmm. well for me. So that was like the product that I would swear by and splurge on, but that was about it before. So, and um, what was your... Hi, Madeline. Hi, Peyton. Your... Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what were your biggest fears and struggles about trying new skincare? So the biggest thing was, and especially because my mom side of the family is always like, oh, we have really sensitive skin and we tend to break out with new products that are too harsh. So like literally all the American brands minus um, like the Estee Lauder, uh, well, I say American, but not non-KBD brands would make us break out. So like my whole mom's side of the family would only use KBD or um, like the Japanese mm -hmm. brands. So that was always my concern. Like all the drugstore brands I couldn't use because they would make my skin break out or clog up and it was just not a happy time. So I was not into experimenting at all with my skin. Yeah. And how did you discover sabbatical beauty? So over the past like three or four years, I've started to, because I have three dogs, I've started to do like limited ingredient diets for them. And we've started to go to a lot of like farmer's markets. So we're looking at like really concentrated flavors and things for other aspects of my life. So I decided maybe with skincare, if I looked with for items that had fewer ingredients, but more concentrated, higher quality. So I started looking up like articles about cleansers because I'd run out of all my K-beauty stuff that I'd like smuggled over from Korea. So I started to look up things and I came across VCCO and some article, I think it was like Allure or one of the big magazines. And they're like, oh, this only has like four or five ingredients. I was like, sold, I will try it. So I did. Nice. And I, was <laughs> I remember your, um, your Milia video. <laughs> yes. That you posted, I think that was the first video you posted in group and I watched the thing on a loop for like five minutes straight it was so like hypnotizing and catchy it sounds like a song I would sing to my kids <laughs> you totally can but your kids might sing it back to you so you might not like me afterwards <laughs> it's okay it was really cute you guys if you haven't seen it you have to go to our um group videos and go like way back, scroll down until you see Hayne's very first video. And she sings mm -hmm. this cute little Milia song while she's massaging her face with BCO. It's awesome. <laughs> I um, sang it today and I wish I'd taken a picture because like a big, big Milia came out on my jawline and I was so excited. And I was like, oh, the Milia song, it worked its magic again. Yay. And then I forgot to take a picture. It was huge though. It was really big. I was excited. So lucky. Um, what 
what gave you the final push to go and actually buy the product and put it on your face? So definitely the limited ingredients um, for VCCO. And then the fact that it came in a trial size, I think we called it a sample size before. Um, mm -hmm. Just that it was in a trial size. So it was like less pressure for me to have like a whole bottle to go through. Cause literally I still, I have like a graveyard of bottles on my desk right now of other products that I haven't used. And I like, I wanna throw them out, but I'm also like 50. So I'm thinking, Maybe another part of my body can use this, but if I look at all my SB things, I'm like, no, you don't want to do that. So I have a graveyard of other products. So basically, it was the small sample size that really did me in. Um, and then, of course, when I tried it, you guys all got my Milia song. So that was the rest of the story is I've just milia forward <laughs> with the other products. You, okay, so you know what I do with my graveyard products is I use them on my feet. Oh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that for sure. Yeah. Like, and it's not even the top of my feet. It's like the way bottom. Cause I'm like, if it fucks yeah. up, it fucks up the bottom of my foot. <laughs> the bottom of your feet. Yes. They, they're yes. only good enough for the bottom of our feet. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and people are like, um, what's that, that really expensive Lancome cream? Absolute. It was like, it's like yes. a $200 cream. And I have a bunch of those, or I had a bunch of those because I used to work for Lancome. And I used to put it on my feet. And like, I would tell people, oh, yeah, I use that on my feet. They're like, you use a $200 cream on your feet. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not going to put it on my oh. face. It actually made my yeah, face burn really face. bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, what Peyton and... said. The same thing. She said, I want to give my old stuff away, but I feel bad about giving ineffective stuff to friends. I have the exact same issue with like full size yeah. bottles of other brands that are not even opened. And I'm just kind of looking at them like, I don't want to give non-SB things away. Use them on your feet, Peyton. <laughs> yes. uh, what results did you hope to see with SB and did you achieve those results? So definitely um, as I've gotten older, when I was really young in my skin, skin journey, I used to have perfect, perfect skin. Like I was that 12, 14 year old with no acne, no nothing, like no pores. It was perfect. So I grew up thinking I would continue to have that. And then I hit my mid twenties and I suddenly got adult acne. That was so much fun. No, it wasn't because I was like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> what do I, <laughs> I'm not used to this. What do I, what, what do? Oh my God, no. So yeah, right now I think it's the stress in my immune system and all this other health stuff. But anyways, I ran into adult acne and that was like the number one thing I wanted plus the milia. Again, something I never had as a 14 year old and then all of a sudden mid twenties, bam. Hi, welcome to the rest of the skin world <laughs> where we've been sitting yep. for years waiting for you to catch up. And I was like, oh, looking up all these like acne articles and yeah. So number one was my adult acne. Number two was the milia and three is kind of like the bumps that I randomly get. They look like mosquito bites. If you've seen my past videos, it's like stress related, mm -hmm. but they're not acne. It's just little, um, I guess, immune system reactions and they're a little itchy and they look exactly like mosquito bites and I can't cover them with makeup because I'm not Marissa Rhodes and I can't do makeup. <laughs> so. Every time uh, I see pictures of you with makeup on, it looks pretty good. So you're good. You're good. <laughs> okay, that's like five minutes of effort because that's about all I can do. I'm like, oh, that's eyeliner, right? I look good with eyeliner swipes. <laughs> okay. Contouring? What's contouring? I have a palette. I don't know how to use it. I will, I will, yeah. Some, somewhere this stuff goes on. And then I walk out looking like a ghosty with clown makeup and I'm like, and I'm going to take all this off before I go to work because I look scary. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I wanted to address mostly the adult acne, which, um, and the milia and SB has really, really been good. So I freak out way, way less about that stuff. Cause even if I get it, I have like a plan and I am OCD. So like a plan is really important. <laughs> um, <clears throat> where am I? Okay. Um, so now that you have integrated SB into your regimen, how do you feel about your skin? It's good. And I just started getting into that, but I freak out less about the skin issues that crop up because, you know, you can't really have perfect skin all the time, even with SB because mm -hmm. there's different hormone levels. There's different, you know, air pollutants that just, it's different. Um, 
week to week. And before I had products that I could count on, I was like, oh no, I have to use my non-existent makeup skills to cover this up because none of my skincare products will actually work on this besides like, you know, medicated lotions. Um, but now that I've incorporated it, I'm like, okay, well, I have it up in my forehead so I can spot mask with detox or I could use more honey or like I have like a whole slew of weapons in my arsenal and it's fabulous because I feel like I'm using weapons. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we has a problem. We're going to shoot it down <laughs> with this, this, and this. It's fabulous. So I feel, I feel very empowered to take care of my skin because yeah. I know what to do. What's your favorite multi-masking combo? It's a new one, and it, unfortunately, it has a tester. It's a tester product, but we have a fabulous, sticky, new, very nice smelling tester mask. And I know you know exactly what it is, but I'm not going to reveal it um, with detox. So it heals oh. and it detoxes, and it's fabulous. So I've mixed the wow. two together, and it's just like the right consistency, and it's fabulous. Well, no, some backstage cast members actually have received that tester mask. Oh. So um, I'm pretty sure that they're going to be excited to try it too. So if yeah. you're a backstage cast member and you happen to get this brand new super sticky tester mask, try it with detox. It's mm -hmm. my new favorite. <laughs> I'm pretty yes. sure we're going to get it. I'm pretty sure. I'm hoping that we get that new mask because it is wonderful. I, I actually so. love, I love to mix it with um, Dorothy's licorice mask. Mm, I, saw I saw that. I saw that. Yes. Yep. It makes yes. the licorice mask Jordy perfect. Um, Jordy says, I never thought of mixing masks. I just do one and another one. I know, but you can save time. <sighs> And you can make different masks in different areas. Like I always do spot masking with Bethany. Mm -hmm. um, usually the mm -hmm. beard. I have the Bethany beard because that's where I break out. And then mm -hmm. the rest is like a bunch of other things, depending on what I need. Yes, um, mixing the math is mm -hmm. great. Okay, now let's talk about the community. So tell me about your experience with group and what you love most about it. So let's see. I like that there's two groups. One is like explicitly... You know, it's called the resistance and it's very political and I could spew all of my little liberal snowflaking out and no one will call me a snowflake. <gasps> Gasp. All right. That's fabulous. <laughs> so it's great. Um, I love that everyone's on the same page and I can be a snowflake and we are all an avalanche blizzard of snowflakes together and it's great. Um, so I like the resistance group. Hmm? Snowflakes are beautiful. <laughs> they are. They really are. They're very powerful, too, because many, many slow f snowflakes equals an avalanche, and that shit can cause some damage. <laughs> um, and then the regular group, I really like because everyone's super helpful and offering tips, and no one's, like, snooty, like, oh, why are you, why are you such an idiot? Like, what, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, why are you such a noob? You know, like, I feel like we get more excited the newbier you are. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. We're like, oh, my child, come, come closer. We will tell you our secrets and witches brew and things. <laughs> come, come into, come into the circle so we don't have to whisper so loudly. Come on. Um, so it's really nice. I have anxiety about asking questions sometimes. And so the group is like a really nice place to ask many different kinds of questions. Um, whether it's like beauty related or also I just need a group of women to reach out to, which, you know, not a lot of us get to have in real life. <gasps> Baby, Baby, not Baby. happy. <laughs> Baby, not happy. It's okay. Keep going. Hey. <laughs> Nobody likes to be woken up. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I like the two different groups. <laughs> I really love group too. And did you did you lurk for a, a while? Because most people lurk before they actually become <laughs> active. Mm hmm. Yes, I think I definitely lurked for a few weeks because I was like, I don't know if I trust these people. I don't trust a lot of women in my life. There are a lot of catty women I've seen, <laughs> especially in beauty groups, and they can be very snooty. But it seemed very welcoming um, and not as judgy as other groups. So that was helpful. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely true. 
<laughs> and last question <laughs> is if you were an SB product, which one would you be? I would definitely be a Holy Lotus mask. Um, just not, okay, as I wear a pink bathroom, I'm not really a pink person. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> seriously, I'm not, I'm not a pink person with the pink lipstick. Okay, I am a recently pink person. Um, so I really like the delicate kind of salmony pink shade it is. Um, and I just like the way it smells, and it's just, I like feeling like a holy lotus. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Um, a lotus in Korean culture is, I mean, it is pretty holy. It's in a lot of the temple ponds and things, and they're just beautiful. And almost like the definition of purity without the misogyny. So it's like the very mm -hmm. feminine um, without masculine ideals on it. It's just, it's very gender neutral at the temple. So that's why I like it as a concept. Um, and I still really like Holy Lotus Mask, despite like all the other ones that I've tried. It's like that bubble gummy sort of soothing scent is just, it's awesome. I like it. So that would be me. And um, is Lotus your favorite mooncake filling? <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You know how obsessed I am with mooncakes. I will have to post up the video of my dog also because my dog is my soulmate and she also really loves mooncakes. So between the two of us, oh, awesome. lotus and mooncakes, we are we are set for life. Just wait, just wait till January, and I have all of the stores around me with their mooncakes, and oh. um, we'll be getting a care package in January for sure. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I gotta go around. I, I gotta taste the different ones because some grocery stores make their own there. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you got so, me. There. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have Ranch Ninety Nines in Michigan. Do you? Okay, so it's a it's a Chinese supermarket, and it's a big mm -hmm. chain here. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Ranch Ninety Nine makes their own, and then Costco still has a bunch, and. Mm. Um, and then there's the other like little independent shops that have them too. So I'm gonna go on a mooncake tour in honor you know of where you. My heart is. You know where my <laughs> heart is between Holy Lotus and Mooncake. I will not stop at anything. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. I know we've had to put it off a couple times because um, I've been sick. I don't know if you can still hear it in my voice, but I just got my voice back a few days ago. Yeah. Um, and you were sick, and then I was on vacation, and you were doing something, I forgot, I think you were, oh no, you had visitors come, you had the whole SB crew come to visit you. So yeah, this has okay. been a long time waiting, and I'm glad we finally got to do this, so thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, if you guys are catching the replay, go ahead and leave any questions for Hayne you might have in the comments, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Yay. And I'll have more for you tomorrow. I'm going live with Julie as in Carol Julie. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.